It was the haunting crackle of a feast. It's eaten. It's a living, breathing thing. Part of the Okanagan complex fire, devouring dry grass, inhaling strong winds, and expanding. This is a little different monster. <laughs> from Highway 20, the flames towered overhead, just a mile from the road. Oh my. Reminding everyone being forced to evacuate exactly why they had to leave. Fires from different counties are merging. Never seen it. It is flying down this hill. And soon he'd seen enough. I think I might need to go. Okanagan County firefighters made one last visit to a home beneath the flames. One last warning to get out. Moments later, it's time to go. We joined them. So we've been watching the fire burn. You can see it right here. It's crested this little ridge. We're on Highway 20, heading back towards Tenasket, and the winds have fueled it. Look at that, you can see how close it is right now. There's a family right below this ridge that just started evacuating. And we're getting the heck out of here. It wasn't long before Tenasket High filled up with others trying to escape. I got family on the west side. They're all freaking out because they called when we were fleeing. Some, like Tony Harrell, and lost everything. You just you say goodbye, you know, and we didn't know if we were going to make it. But the fires aren't stopping, and by early evening, all of Tenasket had to evacuate too. A lifetime of memories is poof. We've had a terrible tragedy. <laughs> there's been a terrible loss of life, and there's been injuries. This morning at approximately 11.13 a.m., Seattle Fire Units responded to a four-vehicle traffic accident at the 3700 block of Aurora with approximately four different types of vehicles involved. One was a tourist bus, one was an amphibious vehicle better known as the Duck. The Duck was trying to, he kind of veered into the middle lane a little bit, and then he veered over to the right. He overcorrected and just shot across all three lanes at full speed, no brakes, no nothing, and hit the side of that bus. It's like both, both vehicles are people trying to enjoy you know, their day. We have triaged a number of patients. We found that four were, um, had passed away already here on scene, four DOA. And they're trying to work on one guy. They've hauled off most of the people. We've transported 44 patients. A lot of cars just got missed. It's just. The chance of them hitting a bus full of people with no seatbelts, that's the worst. A lot of lives just got changed really fast. Thoughts and prayers of this city go out to everyone, uh, to the families and to those impacted. We stand here as equals with respect for one another. It was a great photo op from the steps of the Idris Mosque in Seattle. We preach a message of love. Christians, Jews, Quakers, and Buddhists holding hands with Muslims. Solidarity with our Muslim sisters and brothers in this community. These are Seattle's religious leaders. Of course they wouldn't support Trump's ideas about keeping Muslims out of the country. But we know polls suggest there are millions of Americans who agree with Trump, and they're not holding press conferences in front of TV cameras. Thank you for this great gesture of support. That's why I decided to build a little experiment. I created this cardboard box and went looking for honest messages to Muslims. I picked Pioneer Square in downtown Seattle because it's busy and it's diverse. I found people buying food, eating food, playing games, and plain old passing through. I promised everyone I won't put you on camera. Just fill out a little piece of paper anonymously and tell me your honest messages to Muslims. All right. Let's see what we got. It surprised me. All right. All right. I walked up to 24 people, and 22 of them wrote a message. You have my full support as fantastic members of the vibrant quilt that makes up America. This person just drew a heart. You are supported. Thank you for being great community members. God bless this country. It's unbelievable to me that anyone takes anything Donald Trump says seriously. Most messages sounded like that. I realize we are in liberal downtown Seattle. 
Out of those 22 messages, I ended up with two that agreed with Trump. Trump is 100% correct. Make America great again. They do not respect us. They should not be allowed in. I admit I'm very curious who wrote those, but honestly, I have no idea. These were anonymous, unfiltered, and honest. In Pioneer Square, Dan Casuto, K5 News. You see them from the street, off the highway and throughout town, signs sprinkled around Roseburg, a dusting of remembrance and sadness and strength. In time, most will disappear, not because the murderers at Umpqua Community College are forgotten, but because life moves forward. We're not broken yet. So what do you need, Robbie? But here, you can take the past with you forever. I don't think anybody lives here that doesn't know someone that was somehow involved. Okay, are you ready? Cherie Hall owns Tapestry Tattoo. Today, she was busy. So it's the organet line with Roseburg Strong and a green heart. Really busy. A lot of people, this is going to be their first tattoo. So that's really cool. I'm kind of nervous. Outside, <laughs> Madeline Shirley was first in a quickly growing line. I'm getting my first tattoo today, and I think this is for a good cause. So. Few would argue. <laughs> Considering where she was October 1st, the UCC campus. I was in the room next door, and I just remember hearing the shots, and then I ran out of the room. On her fourth day of college, Shirley hid in the library. I think it'll definitely be something that'll be with us for the rest of our lives. We'll always remember that day. It's one thing to remember in your mind. It's another to remember on your skin. A memory of a lifetime. Something that we'll never forget. Tina Avendano was also on campus. I didn't get to see what happened, but I got to hear the bullet sounds of that went through. I don't know what's worse is, is seeing something or hearing the sounds that were taking people's lives. The tattoos were free, with any donations going to the victims. And they were another reminder that even if the signs around town go away, this tragedy is tattooed on its soul. Welcome to the tattooed race. <laughs> Shirley's was just the first of the day. Oh, cute. Oh, I love it. Hundreds waited outside to ensure they will never fade. You know, nine people lost their lives that day, and I, I'm doing this in honor of them. You know, those are moms, children, aunts, uncles. They're never going to have their life back. I want this to, as a representation to honor them and so that nobody ever forgets that day. In Roseburg, Oregon, John Langler, King 5 News.